Hey guys, how's it going? Sam the Grizz here. I uh, just decided to record this video because A, I think it could help somebody and B, I just wanted to kind of uh, sh share the progression and another upgrade to my car. So basically what we're doing here today is installing the T-Rex Smart Pro panel in the R35 and uh, it's uh it's pretty good so i got a 2013 dba uh black edition and then uh north american so the uh, the you know the main cluster originally was kind of um a little outdated so i just felt like you know it was a cool upgrade you know turn it around so basically i'm at a point where i've basically done already done most of the work so it might not be fair to somebody who's just starting but i'm gonna run through all the steps it's pretty really trivial i mean it i took a break last night when i was installing this because it got too late but i'm just gonna run over the steps with you uh don't be intimidating the whole install should take no more than a couple hours i mean a couple hours at a leisurely pace right i had to troubleshoot a couple things so i'm gonna go over that um because i mean if it's a mistake i made maybe anybody else could make that too so originally, uh, what, how I started was, as per the instructions, I first took off my top leather trim, the interior piece. How I did that exactly was like in the, uh, on the, you know, next to the uh, driver's side door, stuck my thumb in the AC vent, held it up here, and just pulled it up. And when I say pull it up, I mean, you see these two clips, there's like one clip there, one clip there um they just pop out so you know you do that then you come over to this side same thing pull it up uh similar two clips they pop out and then um the instructions advise use a plastic trim removal tool me i like i literally just kind of like grabbed it the leather had a good grip and just like pulled it up mine just popped out it wasn't as easy as the other two pieces so it took some effort but it wasn't impossible so you can see oh device too hot flashlight turned off that's great anyways um there's like two fuck one sec okay let's try this again so the uh as i was saying there's a couple clips in there i mean like it's like one clip there Another one there, and another one that goes into there. So those three clips, knowing where they're positioned, you just pull them up. The reason you're doing that is because there's gonna there were two screws up here that hold the original multifunction display in there. Now, we again, great turned off, great. And then uh, once you pop that off, the side uh, trim pieces, they're pretty easy to take off. These guys, basically, uh, what I, like in one of my previous videos is I showed, I just like put my hand on the side here, kind of just like pulled out like that, straight out with them. And looking at these clips, it just like popped out. So that was great. Uh, did that on both sides. Uh, popping that trim out lets you access the two screws that you really need to start taking off your R switch panel and your climate control slash audio control panel. And um, so once you take the R panel out, I mean, uh, unscrew those uh, four screws, you can just kind of, it was a little tough to at, in the beginning, but you just like put your hand underneath the R panel, um, which is right here. So it was like in there like that. And then basically I just reached down underneath, gently yanked it out a little bit. And with that, the climate control unit on top came out because of these little lips that go behind the climate control panel. So you know when it was installed, first the R panel goes in, then the climate slash audio control panel goes in. But, um, I mean, call it what you want. I just like sl slid out the R panel. I've taken this out before, so that's why. I popped it out a little bit until the top part came out as well. Then I kind of just like lowered it, 
yanked it out a little bit, uh, disconnected the cable from the back, the harness, I mean, sorry. Uh, once I disconnected that, I saw uh, uh, the other points to take off the climate control box. Sorry, I just had to take a break there just to make sure I was on the right track. Yeah, so once you take off the two screws that hold the climate control slash audio control panel in place, it just pops out. I put I put mine back in a box so I would show you otherwise, but there's like just little clips on the side that hold it in. And the bottom part have all, has already been popped out because of the way I said to take out the R switches. But um, then, yeah, you just take out the top. And just like gently pull out there's going to be three uh harnesses on the back just unplug those and then yeah sorry i apologize the light on my phone keeps switching on and off something to do with my phone's temperature but um so you got your r switches taken out climate control panel taken out so by at that time with this trim removed you should be able to see the two screws on top that and the two screws on the bottom that are gonna hold the multifunction display in place. Uh, take those four screws out and uh, keep your screws handy because you're gonna eventually, I'm assuming you wanna keep the OEM parts if you ever wanna restore it and whatnot. But if you're selling the display, the control panel, then forego the screws, I guess. Or just include the screws with those units because you never know the next um, cus the customer, the next owner might need those. So once you take those out, be careful, very, very careful with the multifunction display or even with this unit or any display unit because the liquid crystal crystal display, the LCDs, they're very sensitive, they're delicate, and you want to keep them in the best condition possible. So once you pop that out, the this part of the trim pieces that originally that had the status, whatever, go back function, brightness there's like four switches with a knob in the middle so that all comes out as one unit so pop it out there's nothing really holding it on this side i don't think but you kind of have to get the trim out of the way to get it out so with the control panel r switches control panel out and then you take the multifunction display out next thing you are ready is to take the stock radio out and how you want to get at the stock radio is the the trim piece around your gear switch lever. Now that first that that gets popped out. How I started was like originally like around the cup holder. I just grabbed the lip, and at the very end I started with the clips on this end. So I popped the clips on here, pull it up here, pop those clips as an and then as I as it popped out, I just went along and I was like plug, unplug, pop out, pop out, pop out. Eventually they just, you know, pop out, you take them off. And as you can see, that's how the clips are. Those little white things. So they're pretty straightforward. I mean, you know, good old Nissan, right? Everything's clipped in. <laughs> so once you take that part out, um, now the instructions say that there are screws holding this bad boy in the cover, but they're not. Uh, to For me, there were just like little clips. There's like a clip down here on both sides here. And then I might as well show you guys what I can because my light's off right now. But back there. And then there's like a clip up front. So it basically just popped out. But before you pop that out, you're going to have to take out your uh, gear shift lever. And how that comes out is uh, when it's in place. When it's in place, I put in a little flathead screwdriver uh, in that little gap there and wedged the bottom piece off. It just snapped off. Uh, again, this is from experience, so I kind of knew. And when it snaps off, it there's not much room for it to go, but then you're gonna see a little metal clip around here. Um, it's gonna look like this. Do not lose this clip. It's very, very important. So this clip, there's a clip that holds the gear shift lever in place. And you see the clip with a pair of pliers or a screwdriver. However, just be really careful. Pop it out, set it aside, and then 
your gear shift lever should just come off. And voila. Like, that's where the clip goes. You see uh, that little slit there? That's where the clip goes into. So you should see it. So with that off, um, then you'll be able to pop this off. And then, like I said, there's clips on the side. Uh, pop out those, uh, pop this out of those clips. For me, what worked best is like I popped the the front end out a little, and then the back end. And now this is where you got to be careful. Uh, lift the back end first a little bit, and then there's going to be a harness behind the start stop so start stop switch. There's a little harness there. You basically uh, unplug the harness. So I'll just, I have it plugged in because I have to turn the car on and off at this point. But uh, it should, it's awkward holding the phone and trying to take it out. One sec. So I got the harness unplugged. So then you just lift this over the gear shifter. And then see that harness that's unplugged. That's basically, it just powers the LEDs on here. So basically you wanna gently unplug that. And the reason I said, un, uh, you know, pop the front clips, then pop the, pop the back and then, um, but unplug the back harness first is because these harnesses, uh, the, the, they have very little uh, forgiving, uh, like for, excuse me, very little foreplay or a give, I mean. And then for play, um, the start cable seems to have more than this little LED power cable. And the LED power cable is far more fragile as well. So that's why I just disconnect the start uh, plug harness first, lift it up uh, without moving the panel, putting too much stress on the harness, unplug this. Once you do that, you can just take this off. I just, I just kept setting all my stuff aside on the passenger side for a while. Now, with this exposed, what it gave you was access to uh, basically with this unit plugged in. I'm just going to kind of loosely put it in place. And, uh, okay. Just so you guys get the point. There's a, okay, whatever. When this is in place, you're going to notice the two screws on the bottom and then the two screws on the top. They're all Phillips, by the way. I should have mentioned this in the beginning. All the screws are Phillips so far. So, and they'll, I think they'll always be Phillips as far as I know. Um, took them out, took the screws off, and then basically you're going to have a harness in there. It's going to look like this, which is plugged into the top part of this cover that one just like i believe just basically powers their leds on the back and uh does it not what does it do i think it powers it no maybe it doesn't power your leds i don't know it just goes in there and then this harness gets unplugged from the inside uh, I think you can actually just barely see it right in there. That white thing, that's like, it's uh, fixed in to, it's like mounted into your car. You can't take that out. But anyways, just unhook that. Once you unhook those two harnesses, you can take it out. Once you take it out, you're going to have your factory radio in here. Uh, the factory radio is going to be, it's going to have uh, four screws holding it down as well. Um, there's, there are like two screws on top, two screws on the bottom. And at this point, I'm going to point out that uh, you're probably watching this video before you start. Anyways, let's try to kind of run through everything at a fast pace. The good thing with Nissan is like anything that was on plastic trim. Uh, especially like all the black pieces like for example beside the r switches um that held the climate audio control panel in 
those uh, screws and the screws that held the sound system cover in, the Bose plate, since they're all plastic trim pieces, their screws were all black. And then the multifunction display unit and the uh, the stereo system, the built-in amplifier, they were metal flanges that were screwed in. And the metal flanges had all the silver screws. So that's a good way to rem remember. Hopefully everyone's car is the same. Could be different, but I mean, I noticed that pattern. So I was like, oh, good job, Nissan. Like I didn't have to be like, oh no, I took these screws out from that exact same location. It's kind of easy to remember. There's only two types of screws so far. And yes, they're uh, both Phillips. So that's easy. I just got two bits. This one, uh, I did most of them with the short one. The long one, I just needed to get into the bottom screws for the audio system they were really really tight so i needed more leverage so need... anyways so took those out you took the audio system out now when you take out the stereo system just be really careful because there's a lot of harnesses in the back this is from the r switch panel that i know and this is from the uh, previous climate control panel so when you take out the audio there's going to be a shit ton of harnesses um a lot of guys i you don't really have to remember which way that went they went in i realize it's pretty trivial because um the colors on the harnesses the number of pins available in the harnesses oh light turn off so it's pretty trivial but just be gentle when you're pulling it out like what i did was like i got it out enough where i could reach in the back and start unplugging the harnesses so start from the top kind of go side to side whatever you can i got big hands so i had to kind of pull it out a little bit further which was fine there was no severe stress on the cables so but point is be really really careful like if you think you're careful enough just be a little extra careful because you don't want to wreck those harnesses right so that's it so now you got Basically, your cavity is empty, right? Then you can just go in and uh, install your unit. So the instructions for installing the T-Rex, like plugging in the harnesses are pretty simple. So what I'm going to do now, I guess, is take the T-Rex unit out so I can show you uh, just a little quick snapshot on the backside. Okay, I don't think there's too many variations to this, but since everything's hooked up, I'm going to try to do my best to explain this. So what I did first is connect the cables to the T-Rex Smart, uh, the T-Rex Pro panel. So I just started with the main black harness and goes in there. There's only one black harness, you know, I plug it in. Then with these white harnesses, uh, the trick with these is there's a specific number of pins to each harness. So each harness has only has one place to go. Now you got your, you know, like main little harness in here uh smaller so the top one this one right here i believe is for your sim card so i am going to use 4g capabilities on my unit so i put in a sim card in here it's not the regular sim card and it's not the nano sim it's the micro sim so one generation like one size older than the latest sim card technology I wonder if I can... Oh, yeah, I can pop it out. So there, I got my SIM card in there. Uh, so, yeah. just I put my SIM card in there, and then these are just your general um, banana plugs. Like your... Uh, what's it called? For your... And they're all labeled. I think they're just like for random video outs and video ins. Yeah, audio outs, video outs, and stuff like that. So this harness, I have it all tied up just as is because... It's just going to nest in the back. So if you're not using 4G capabilities, I don't think you need this. Double check with the TRS support. And if you're not using that, then... And, and, none of, and this just plugs into the unit. It doesn't plug into anything else. Standalone harness, uh, standalone feature. Then with that, I would say there's a, the 4G dongle. I call it a dongle, but whatever. Might not exactly be a dongle so this uh antenna looking guy come on 
sorry, one second. This guy. It's like a little, uh, packed in a little bubble, a little foam, just to keep it safe and secure and to uh, protect it from any, uh, you know, contact or movement from, you know, driving, as well as thermal insulation. I believe that's the purpose of this. So basically, it has two cables coming off it. One of them is labeled uh, 4G plus. Four G. Oh, there you, you can see. It. One of them is labeled 4G plus, and the I bought my unit secondhand, so I didn't have a second label on it. But I'm assuming it's 4G minus because on the back of the unit you're gonna see a 4G plus and a 4G minus, uh, you know, markings. But the 4G plus, the coaxial uh, female connection has not been installed on the unit. That's why it's empty. That's why you'll see these holes um, maybe further down the road or some other variations of the unit might have them. That's why they have this, but this one, mine doesn't. So like, it's just like process of reduction. So if there's no 4G plus, there's 4G minus. So you can just connect the 4G minus cable in. Now people have different opinions on where to put this. You can put it in your router down to your A pillars. So you have, you know, you're closer to the satellites and the antennas out there. But I'm just going to go ahead and place it on right above my, uh, what I assume is where my accelerometer and everything is, this little plastic box. Not exactly sure what this unit does. But yeah, so I'm just going to tuck it in there because there's a good amount of room. So that is the 4G that is a 4G connection that I addressed. So, yeah, so all your harnesses plug in easily. Oh, um, that was about your 4G harness. Uh, the ones, everything else is important, I believe, except for the two. The, there's like a two pin and a three pin harness in there. They're basically your USB ports. Um, my unit came with these two USB ports. That's what those cables are. If you're not, if you don't plan on using your USB ports, don't plug them in. But I believe you should have at least one plugged in because there might be software updates that they have to upload through a thumb drive. So because of that reason, have uh, at least one plugged in. I just plug both in, right? Just to be safe. Uh, those will eventually be routed into the glove compartment now and then so yeah the um i forget what that one does i think it's like one of the main audio ones then the usb ones and then this one is for the backup camera now i'm using my factory backup camera asking everybody if your car doesn't come with one i believe you can buy the pro unit with a camera kit uh mine came with one but i didn't end up using it so it's just like Cable like so you have that cable that plugs into the back of the T-Rex unit and then the other part that also came with it This plugs in to the factory backup uh, Camera the original harness that was plugged into your multifunction display uh, your multifunction display had a power and a data harness so I believe you just take those out and Yeah, plug it in here. That's for your backup camera and then, so you got, got to address those two. Oh, and then the, your GPS, GPS coaxial, and then your radio, these remain. So the radio one, you just like plug it in. It's your antenna, basically, that's what it is for your FM radio. Um, if you don't want it, don't plug it in, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, good to just have it in there. So uh, you, this one plugs into the factory uh, Nissan unit it would be again really obvious which one it plugs into there's only one other uh, uh, harness from the factory side that looks like this that looks like it, would, it could fit into this so it's a no-brainer just plug it into that now how i plugged it in all, all these cables like uh like i said at first i plugged it into the t-rex unit and then i brought my uh unit over display and then i kind of ran the cables over um the little bar where my R panels were originally uh, screwed onto, like uh, 
the bottom of the audio climate control unit was clipped into that and the top of the R switches was uh, that unit was clipped into here so it kind of so over that bar ran it in and then it goes down into where your factory radio was and that way your factory harness is already down there they're plugging they're easy to plug in that way so that's what it is so first I plug these in in there and the only one I haven't addressed yet is the GPS coaxial connection now um, I have my my gps unit just in here here it is the cable and it's just like sitting on top of the white box now it's recommended that you place your gps unit as high above as possible for the best uh signal strength to the with the gps's now i'm just gonna leave it in there because for now because I don't want to uh, bother routing it all the way through to my A pillars and whatnot. But yeah, um, or maybe I will at the end of the video. I'll see. I'll decide later. But for now, that's basically what I've gotten done. I got these harnesses going over and inside. So I tucked the 4G and the GPS in there for now. And then I with everything connected. Again, on the little harnesses on the radio side, everything was trivial. Um, the only thing, oh yeah, the mistake that I made. Let me go over that. Um, oh yeah, so the mistake that I made. So there's this, uh, there's these two harnesses that come with your T-Rex unit. One is labeled 08 to 09, which I did not pay attention to in the beginning. It has four wires going to it, and the other one on my end, I guess it doesn't have a label on it, but it has two wires going in. So what I did was not paying attention. I had the 08 to 09 harness plugged into the factory harness, and the issue that gave me is my rear view camera wasn't working. It was just showing a black screen. So everything else was working but my backup camera. So later, I kind of just ran through the connections. The camera wire was not damaged. Nothing was damaged. And I realized I had plugged in the wrong harness. So I took out the 0809 and I plugged this in. And then the factory harness worked. Okay, before I put this in, I just re uh, wanted to point out that I took my GPS unit and I kind of just stuck it, uh, my GPS receiving unit. I just stuck it on the side up there on the plastic because I realized... Um, It'll be, you know, insulated further away from any major sources of hot or cool air. And so zooming back, now I'm going to put this, uh, my multifunction display in. Basically, I'm going to lift up the trim and gently put it in place. So I'll put the video on pause for, or I'll just leave it. So with that plugged in, I guess I might as well, like I said before, there's not much to the harnesses on the radio side. And um, that's it. And basically at this point, when everything's plugged in, um, not everything put back together, what you want to do is take your start button, plug it into the harness and test the display. So we're at a point where the T-Rex panel is fully plugged in. All the necessary harnesses are plugged in. Uh, I just wired up the you know start stop button so I can turn the car on. And once the accessory mode comes on. Um, okay. 
close it. I should close my door so the light turns off. Is my door off? Oh. There you go. And that's it. I turned it to on. I realized because a lot of the lights weren't turned on yet. So now you can see all the buttons are lit up. Here, uh, fan controls. So this is the point of the install where the instructions say test your your GPS, your 4G, and your climate control, your audio control. Now, I don't know if the camera picks up. There's a bit of white noise playing out of my speakers. That's, uh, it needs like a, a bandpass filter installed. There's the T-Rex support can guide you through that. They have their own instruction, a set of instructions for that. But I'm just going to go through the pro panel installation. So first of all, like I know my uh, LTE is working because I have a full signal connection, got my Wi-Fi connected and my Bluetooth, my phone's connected. So, um, I mean, I, I have signed into my Spotify before doing all this. Um, so my songs are playing, my data connection's working, AC, Turn my AC on. Um, sometimes there's a bit of a lag. Wait, hold on. There you go. I'm not sure how that works. I think with well, the power mode, I know you can turn it off. But yeah, so um, I was just using the touch screen, so it goes down. You know, you can adjust your temperature, speed of your fan. I mean, sorry, that's the volume. That's not the speed of your fan. I apologize. So if I turn that off, the white noise goes off. Uh, this is the speed of the fan. Blows more air. Great, definitely need it. And yeah, so you can switch your mode. So when you press your mode, it changes like which mode you want. Just to, I have, I'm gonna keep this up so you can see. Um, AC off, AC on. Got your well, front windshield fan, rear defroster on and off. Uh, dual climate control or not. I don't think you can turn that off. Or I guess you can. And then you can adjust the temperature for each side. Yeah. So that's great and you know your air from inside or outside and then turn it on auto uh all that works you want to make sure the physical buttons work that's part of the testing procedure so yeah the fan goes faster slows down uh the knob it does work on the temperature now if i have dual turned off turn this knob both temperatures should change, which they are. Great. So, the audio, signal, vents, everything works. So far, it fucking looks amazing. Uh, your unit might look different than mine. Like, I've already gone through a couple things here. Kind of changed the layout, changed my wallpaper, etc. I got my unit used as well. So, I had to log out of the previous owner's Google account his Spotify account, whatnot. Um, uh, having connected to your, you know, Wi-Fi, you can always download apps. You got your Google map, your, you know, Bluetooth phone. I got my own SIM card in here so I can make my own phone calls. So it's kind of funny if you think about it, my car has its own cell phone number, uh, its own telephone number. And yeah, built-in navigation. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the apps. There's, I'll let you guys figure that out. But yeah, and what like ECU Tech app, you can connect to your, um, if you got your car tuned on ECU Tech, you can use uh, the ECU Tech app on here. So it's connected to my car, initializing race ROM. And 
guess it might take a second. The car is not running, it's just on. So there it is, and from here, like basically, this is kind of off topic, not related to the install, but I can go to my dash, set up my own custom dash. So while the car is running, uh, one of the key features of the multifunction display, besides the navigation, resetting the, uh, what's it called? Uh, maintenance intervals, all those alerts, was the performance parameters. Now you can see all your performance parameters on here. Uh, I'm not sure if you need to, uh, how the fuck do you go back? Oh yeah, kind of that, that, it disappears. So you kind of just have to scroll up, go, go back, get out of ECU tech. Uh, so basically T-Rex tech later down the road, they want you to be able to upload uh, ROMs upload tunes from the panel itself to your ECU tech uh, platform and they'll be adding you know features down the road uh, free lifetime software firmware updates uh, one-year warranty from purchase the owner Adam he's very very helpful I gotta give a big shout out to Adam he's helped me a lot already and they're always able to remote in and help you out in person if you ever need that, you know? So that's great. And now I'm just going to go ahead and turn the car off, knowing that everything works. And what I'm going to do now is just put the car back together. So now that we've tested everything, make sure everything works, it's time to put the car back together. Um, the first thing you want to do is put your original... Um, uh, sound system faceplate on your factory uh, you know sound system uh, the cover on once you put that cover back in place make sure you plug in the factory harnesses this one the one that goes into the uh, faceplate and this little uh, one that plugs in to that white one up there so these two need to be plugged in this uh, third one was one of the cables that went into your uh, originally control, uh, your original climate and audio control panel. Don't need this one. So, well, yeah, once this is in, you can um, put in your R switch panel. So I'm gonna actually, I'm actually gonna go ahead and do that right now as a, as uh, we're doing. So once the sound system faceplate is screwed in, the four screws, you can go ahead and uh, connect your harness for your R, R uh, switches. There it is. Sorry, took a second. Once it's plugged in, the R switches. Now you can see for the R switches, there's like these two pins on each side. You can only see one right now because of my poor lighting, but that needs to go in the insert. And then these will go into the insert below the T-Rex panel. You'll see it. Nope. You'll see it. So once those need to be put in. I guess getting those lined up is not as easy as it seems, but once that's in, the T-Rex panel mounts on top of it, like along the edge, and then you can put your four black screws in. And uh, 
without going through the, I'm gonna pause the video for now. I'm gonna screw these in. And once I screw these in, I'm gonna just make sure that it, uh, screw, uh, yeah, screw those four screws in, put the two screws on top, then I'm gonna pop the trim in and come back. Okay, so a little point I wanna make is the screws, are, when you're putting them in, be careful. You put them in, like start off really slow and gentle because there's really easy to catch, misthread them. And uh, so I did that on a couple. I was able to get the original uh, thread back. On one, I just kind of had to force my way through. So rest in peace. Um, so that these are screwed in and everything. Uh, I connected my the two harnesses, like the one up there, one for the start button. Kind of click the whole panel in. Put my carbon fiber cover back on. Now I'm gonna put my shift knob back on. I think I'll get that on camera. Just to kind of give you guys an idea. So, you know, this was like sitting apart. When I'm putting it back in, I'm gonna put the this bottom plastic piece above the lip. See that lip? Put it above the lip, but don't click it in all the way. Put it onto your knob. Make sure it's like all the way down. And it's all the way down. Move this over to the side. And then put your your clip back in. Can. Oh wow, look at that. Just snap back in. So, and you know it's snapped back in because this won't come out. So then you just pop this back on. Make sure. It's on the bottom, on the front end, that lip I talked about, make sure it's like, you raise it, lift it, and then it snaps back on into place. Make sure nothing's loose, no gaps, run your fingers along. So that's in place, and then, uh, then just, it's just your little interior trim. This fella, I'm basically I'm uh, putting the clips back in the same order as I popped them out. This stuff is wrapped as well. When you're putting this back in, be careful about these little clips. Because I've damaged them. Not me, the guy. <laughs> the people who wrapped my car. They damaged it. So. It lines up up there. Lines up on the bottom. Just gently put it in. You shouldn't hear any major clicking. But it does firmly that's a perfect fit right t-rex tech did a really good job with this now where's my other one i think this is the one that got damaged when it was, when it was being installed oh yeah it's like these that little edge clip right there you want to be careful with that or basically any trim in general but some pieces are far more delicate than the rest 
So through experience, I know I kind of line it up along there, make sure that's in, and then just gently tuck that in. No give, no play. Everything's nice and smooth, tucked in. That's it. Now your trim's back. You can start your car. Oh, my wipers. That's it. Make sure our panel switches. LEDs work. Make sure no harness, nothing got damaged. In the process. Yeah. God mode. <laughs> Anyways, so that's all work. That all works and that's all set up. That's it. La di da and your my vents are blowing, so that's good. Now, like I said, I'm gonna deal with this wiring on my own. Um don't think I'm gonna record it or make it part of the video, but I mean I this is my first time doing it. So, and that's it guys. That's a little, uh, <laughs> little installation video for the T-Rex Pro panel. And I'll turn my light off. She looks good. Cheers. Enjoy.